How you doing guys? We're back out. We're up in the northwest of Scotland. There's three years, three of us here today. Myself, Kevin and Robin. We're up to do Anne Chalock. Which is a cracking mountain. We're getting a superb day for this. We've waited all month for weather like this. It's Saturday, August the 31st. And I think this is the first day that our forecast we're going to have dry. So we're going to head up to Anne Chalock, do the two main rows up there and head over to Sealmore, the Corbett, and we're going to have a summit camp there tonight. So the weather's looking absolutely ding dong as they say. So I'm going to make my way further up this track. Hello. Hello. There's Mr Wallace. We met up this morning at quarter to seven. I mean Kevin, Kevin just a wee bit behind. Last minute plans by myself, we arranged last night with ah, good on Robin. You. Aye. Gave us a message last night, what was it, about eight o'clock or something? Aye, eight o'clock, aye. I just come back from fishing, huh? But what a day we're getting, Robin, eh? Superb so far, mate. Superb boss. Superb boss. And here's Kevin Russell, another man of the gang. Hello. Hello. What a beautiful day. <laughs> and that there folks is Little Lock Broom. So that's us at 400 metres now. That's quite tough going. Obviously it's warm today, we've been moaning about the wet weather for over a month. And that behind me, I think that is the first Monroe. That'll be the first target of the day. So a bit of work to do yet. That's good. I managed to fill the water bottle. There's not a lot of water up here on this ridge. So hopefully we come across a stream before we get to camp tonight for some cooking. Ah, but what a day. This is brilliant. The long awaited sunshine. Uh, I don't know if you can make it out in the camera, but over there in the background is the Phanix. We had a superb trip up there in 2021, I think it was. And across here, that's a Bean Gerard group. I thought about doing them today as well, but decided to join Robin in that, as I said earlier. Look at that for a view. Little lock broom from nearly 600 metres. So there's the first Monroe there, folks. We're 800 odd metres just now. You can see somebody up the top. So we'll go up this ridge at the top, then we'll down the other side. Then you can see the second top there in the middle. And you can see the pinnacles just behind that. And I think we go along this ridge right down here, down to Silvoir. The Corbett, where we're going to camp tonight. That's the summit just up there. Probably about another five minutes and we'll be at our first Monroe of the day. And I can't mind the name yet. We'll just call it Anchalak. That's us at the top of the first Monroe. <laughs> and what a day it is. Busy summit, right enough. Right. We're going to drop down. Head over to Sigmund Row.
to a 360 so we're looking into the sun across to the pinnacles and that's Fisherfield just beyond that this is a wee look round the other Fanex again there's a Monroe top just in front of us one sure of the name there's a trig point there's Kevin Lock Broom down there and that dome in the middle you see that's the target for later on Sail Bore possibly camping on top of that tonight I'm taking across to the ridge we're going to go down that'll be a Monroe top and over here that first highest top you see is the Monroe we're going to do next So that's us just left the first Monroe, heading over the second Monroe. That first top was very busy, so we sat there for about an hour probably, so it's going to eat up some time trying to get that core, but we'll see how we go. We'll get a good go anyway, so we'll no mess about the top the next summit too long. Yeah, I can see a group of guys up in the summit just now. We're just looking into the sun, it's a bad time of the day for this. You seen a goat there just running over the top? Do you see it? That's me down at the Belak between the two main rows. So I think it's, I think I've got about 150 meters, 155 meters up to the top of that one. So it shouldn't be too long, maybe 20 minutes, 25 minutes. Just seen a goat there. I think he's maybe caught it in the clip before this. You can actually smell it, it's absolutely rotten. So uh, we're on this path now, heading up the hill and it's basically going to be a vertical 150 metres That's me just approaching the summit The only one I can pronounce is Skew Fiona <coughs> 1060 metres There we go guys, that's Lord Bertley Street and beyond that, you got the Fisherfield Monroes The one at the back there, that's the one I camped on last year, Evagin Ah, yeah, it's We are going to start heading off of this second Monroe, make our way along this ridge, and then we'll drop down into this area here before we attempt to get up that core. But I don't think it's going to happen. It's so looking it a bit, it's looking a bit too far away. But we'll get a shot. Just come down from there. That was quite hands-on. That, to be honest, quite steep in parts. There's a wee look into Fisherfield. That's where we were last year, I think it was last June And that, that one there, that's a Corbett, the first one The hill after that is the first Monroe Square Ban Then you've got, can I remember the third one But the fourth one's Ben Tarson, then you come round to this side In front here you've got Ben Gerard Vore, which is a Corbett Cracking hill, still to do that And behind that you've got Rud Stackmore And behind that again you've got a Vagin a couple of YouTube boys are up the other day, Frank and Murchie Getting a cracking day for it Quite hazy, but it's starting to start get good views now So that's the Corbett there in front Just looks too far away I think that'll be tomorrow morning We'll be heading up that oh, Just look at this, this is stunning eh? Can he beat this? One of the best areas in Scotland My shadow, there's Robin there's the Monroe we just come down. There's the pinnacles on our chalak. It looks like this wee top here is a wee scrambly bit. So we'll go and see what this is like. 
That was a nice bridge walk that. Wish I put the drone up now. There we go. That's us at the top. This is a Monroe top, not a full Monroe. School Craig Nanik. Again, excellent views. Well, like I say, that was an excellent wee ridge walk, that. Ah. I'm going to drop down there, you can see the way the ridge goes. Then down that shoulder. Down to the wee locking. Just taking a wee walk along this wee outcrop. See what the view's like. Uh, that's Loch Snelder, I think it's called. Oh, there a golden eagle. Just lifting up. Oh, -ho! don't know if you can see it in the camera. That's a goldie, Robin. Let me come back. Just lift it up and down there. That's a goldie, Kevin. I think he's a good view of you. Yeah, beauty. Absolutely love birds of prey. Majestic. Brilliant. It's just getting a bit too far now. Ah, this has been a tough gig to put the water. I'll tell you that. It's absolutely nothing up in this ridge. Don't know if I've said this before, but it's getting a bit desperate now. Well, I think we're going to miss this top out and drop down here. There's plenty of water down there, so we're no short down there. But, like I said before, that Corbett's still look miles away. <laughs> so I <laughs> doubt it. <laughs> it's good to get out of that sun. It's been beating down this all day. Really hot. Can't complain though, because it's rained for a month. <laughs> but it's been a beezer all the day. Absolutely roasting. So, I'm just going to walk down this shady bit. And, Make our way over to that hill as far as we can get. So, so that's us all filled up with water now, so that's good. That's one thing out the road. So I just need to find a camp spot. This terrain is quite brutal to be honest. As soon as you stop, you get into live images as well. So anytime I fill up with water there, I've got to get a midge net on. And you've got the deer keds as well, there's loads of them landing on us. I don't think Robin's got his midget with him, so it could be a long night. <laughs> Sick. So we're nearly at this wee bump here. This is 540 odd metres, so we're going to camp up there. And it looks like we'll get a good sunset, hopefully. I think the sun's to set over that direction. I'll just swing you around and show you where we come down from. Just the, the side of that. That's quite steeper. Uh, when you look back, we came quite a distance, that's about three, four kilometres away now. Uh, there's definitely something happened over in Anchalock. We've got the chopper over there searching along the slopes of the first Monroe there. That was our first Monroe of the day. I'm definitely looking for somebody. Hopefully they're okay. You don't, you, like, you don't like to see that when you're out in the house. Well, I take it that boulder must be the top. <laughs> I'm not climbing up on that. I'll just touch the top here. There we go. I don't know the name of this. It's a, a rocky little summit. That's tomorrow's Corbett. Silver. Mentioned that a few times near the sea view. We won't be long, the sun's down. Ah, that helicopter's away now, so hopefully everything's okay. That's where we came from. So I'm going to try and get a pitch. So this is my pitch here. It's no ideal, it's very rocky, but I managed to get the pegs in. 
and tonight I'm in the dual mid for the first time this year. Love this tent, it's like nice and roomy. But I managed to get the pegs in, no bother. And the good thing up here, we're very lucky we've got the three tents together. Look at that. There's Kev having problems pitching, it just collapsed. <laughs> Uh, I've decided the Corbett's for tomorrow. Uh, just look at that for a sunset. Absolutely stunning. It's not a breath of wind either. Midges aren't too bad. Right guys, I'm just going to call it a night now. If anything else happens, I maybe get up right enough. There's a yellow alert for the Aurora. But we'll see what happens. There's nothing showing up just now, but maybe a bit early. But like I say, I'm just going to call it a night and I'll catch you in the morning. Okay, cheers. Good morning, folks. Well, that was a cracking sleep I had last night. Must have been about eight hours. Went to bed probably about half nine, just before it got dark. So, for all up nice and early this morning, the time is six o'clock, I think. It looks as if there's going to be a good sunrise this morning. Just over this area here. It was nice. It was nice and pink this morning. But there's your been rose we done yesterday. So I've got a porridge on the go. That's what we're going to have this morning: a porridge and a coffee. Then we're going to get packed up and head up this hill. Seen a couple get up there last night. I'm surprised they got up there on time. They got up there just at dusk. Good on them. But I think this is the only hill they were doing right enough. Like so as we were at a really hard gig doing the two main roads over in Anchalock, then coming across that ridge over there. So uh, that's the sun starting to come up now. I didn't think we'd see it right enough, but there we are. We've just got a nice location here. The sun's nice and red right now, early morning sun. There's a the camp spot. Sometimes I just there we go, we've got a boy up, so ready for the porridge. Yeah, the sun catching the mountains now. You can just look into Fisherfield just beyond Robin and Kevin there. You can see Bean Gerard Moore, Bean Gerard Beg. And you've got the the eastern side of the Fisherfields there. All the sun hitting them. Absolutely stunning. It's a bit more clear today. Yesterday was a bit hazy. So I'm just going to get this porridge and then get packed up, then we're on my way up that Corbett there. Sail war. That's us all packed up now guys, that's half seven, so we are going to get on my way. Uh, another look around. There we go, there on Chalock. 
this was a good pitch. A bit rocky, but done the business. So that's us on our way up this corbett, and you can see the route we're going up this shoulder here on the left. And we're just going to leave our bags down at the Belak, up and back down, and then we walk out down through that glen. So that's us at the Belak, ready to go up the shoulder of this corbett, Silvore, Robin's 200th. Myself and Kevin, we're ditching the bags down at the Belak because we've got to walk out this way anyway. Oh. And that's better, no bag, just a drone. So get some cracking drone shots up here. I'll tell you something, that sun's warm, it's only 8 o'clock, 10 to 8. So we left camp 20 minutes ago, so and that's us heading up the core, but I think there's about 200, 250 metres to go and back down the same way. I know it's looking into the sun, but there's about a hundred wild goat. Loads of them. You can actually smell them when you're downwind of them. Like I said yesterday, we've seen the one on Anchalik. And there's a the tent, that's that couple that came up yesterday. I'm just going to tag this second top just to make sure but I think the first one is actual summit definitely looks higher but this is a bigger cairn or maybe it's a shelter but what a morning views are tremendous absolutely fantastic what a day to be out Well guys, that's us going to leave the summit of Sailvoort. What a morning it is. Look at that, the clarity is absolutely outstanding. A better day than yesterday. V360, then we're going to get out of here. The view out to sea, a bit hazy out in the distance right enough. But, doesn't get any better than this. You can see where we camped last night, just down there, that small top. Still 500 odd metres right enough. But we just didn't have the energy to come up the top of the Corbett. That was a hard, hard day yesterday over the two main roads. Then the Monroe top, down over that ridge. Then all the way down, then down and up that small hill. There's Billy the kid and all his mates. Look. Go to make goat face. I've seen quite a lot in this trip. 
So that's us back down, that's us back at the bags, ready to head out. So I think that took maybe 20 minutes, 25 minutes to come down from the top of there. Uh, we did speak to the, that couple that was camping up there, right enough, uh, nice couple. They had a cracking night up there, we seen the northern lights for it last night. We were too tired for that, we had that big day yesterday. It wasn't a long day, just a, like I said, 15 kilometres, but a hard 15 kilometres. Still 10 hours, mate. Eh? Still 10 hours. Eh. Uh, they Big Chief Robin. Big Chief. <laughs> right. So I think we're just going to follow this little stream down. Then it joins a kind of bigger river. We'll follow that down as well. I think the, the crossing might be difficult to work with here. Speak to that couple this morning. They come up this way last night. But we'll find out ourselves. We'll no bother them, we'll just wait right through it. <laughs> <laughs> this is us down at the, the main stream. So we're going to cross here. Just up there, you can see Robin and Kevin just heading down. And um, we'll just follow this all the way down, right down to the road. That rock's all right, Robin. I show you, mate. Come on, Kev. <laughs> Our Kev just crossing. It's quite dodgy to be honest. Got a corbett in the background there. Ah, he's made the first part. I'll point you that big rock, Kev. Then get that one with a moss on it. It's not that slippy, mate. That's the one. Good man. You see why they'd maybe struggle a wee bit with that, eh? Aye, aye. As if we were keep dry feet and all, and she's got to go jump. No shortage of water now, Kevin, eh? No shortage indeed. Like yesterday. No, like yesterday. That dry day yesterday, which made it ten times harder. The Robin just got filled it as well. Right, folks. That's us nearly down at the road now. There is little lock brim there. We're just going to make our way down the road and walk along to Dundonald. So I think this is a good time to end this video. It's been a cracking trip. I hope you enjoyed it, because I certainly did. So I'll catch you on the next one. Cheers.